good evening. Will everybody please take your seats? At 7 p.m. we will now call this meeting to order on Monday, November 3rd. We will have the invocation by Pastor Bill Long from South Dade Baptist Church and the Pledge of Allegiance with the Police Explorers and Councilwoman, oh, how about uh, Councilwoman Lobos? Please stand. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful evening, Father, this election eve. And Father, we just ask that you would be with us this evening as we conduct business that's so important to the city of Homestead. And that you would give us great wisdom, Father, as we set about doing the, the work that benefits the citizens of this great city. Father, I ask that you would bless us and help everyone to go vote tomorrow, Father God, and vote responsibly. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our country. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hope, hope, heart. Thank you, you may be seated. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Burgess. Present. Councilwoman Lobos. Here. Councilman McCormick. Here. Councilman Nelson. Here. Councilwoman Sierra. Here. Councilwoman Waldman is absent. Mayor Bell. Here. Thank you very much. Additions, deletions, deferrals? Uh, Mayor, Council Members, we are deferring that to well at the next meeting. We coordinated with their place and everything is just problem coordinated. Thank you very much. Yeah, so noted. I'd like to request uh, that the clerk schedule an executive session in two cases at uh, Eric Stedden's request. The first one is Darlene Adams versus the City of Homestead, and the second is Willie Huggins versus the City of Homestead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Under special presentations, we have Officer of the Month for September 2008, Canon Officer Brian Kennedy, Councilman Nelson. City Council, Mr. City Manager, I'm Reserve Captain Tom Foglia. We have quite a few of the officers here. Major Scott Kennedy, we have uh, Captain Randy Chong, this is Canine Sergeant Tony Trad. We have uh, Brian's family here and his son, his sister, ex-wife. And uh, we're going to talk about the Officer of the Month for September 2008. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Brian Kennedy, just give a little background on him with the department. Uh, he's been with our department for 25 years. He's received close to 40 letters of accommodation while he's been here. And he's received numerous nominations for Officer of the Month and has been selected five times as Officer of the Month during his career. He's received numerous certificates of appreciation, uh, personal letters from communities and other agencies, um, and he's also a canine officer since 1991. His partner's name is Turbo. Um, I want to talk about an incident that occurred back on September 30th. 
Brian was dispatched to the area of Palm Drive and Southeast 43rd Avenue. There was a woman who was distraught that her husband went out ATV riding out by the racetrack. He usually gets home between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. She called sometime after 9 o'clock frantic that he's never late. So Brian was the responding officer. He took the initiative to really handle the case from the beginning. The victim also advised that the individual had heart problems, so that was a concern. What Brian did is, shortly after getting the call and talking to the woman, he actually found the individual's car, the man's car. Realizing that obviously he was still on his ATV, he knew he had to try to find the individual. So what he did is he coordinated efforts with numerous different agencies. He contacted the Miami-Dade Police Department Aviation Unit, the Agricultural Patrol Unit, of course all of our homestead resources that we had, even the Florida Wildlife Commission officers. And again, not knowing exactly what area he may be out in that ATV. Approximately an hour into the search, one of our officers heard a male cries for help in a wooded area. Officer Kennedy now turned his attention to starting a search party in that immediate area. They were able to find this man in the wooded area. Apparently he had crashed his ATV into a tree and was on top of him. And he was trapped underneath it. He then had the Miami-Dade Police Department respond with their ATVs, which were equipped with winches. They were able to remove the ATV. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue had to send their firefighters out with a board in order to extract the individual from the woods. So you can see it was his tenacity and investigative skills and his experience as a police officer to put the effort together to find this individual. You can imagine at that time of the night, chances of finding him might have been rather remote. So he did an excellent job, very well could have saved this individual's life. So it was with great appreciation from our department that he receives September Officer of the Month for 2008. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, City Manager, Chief Rowe who is not here tonight, Administrative Staff, Major Kennedy, my dad. You are so in trouble. No race for me. It's a great honor to accept this award as far as there's plenty of men and women of the City of Homestead Police Department that are very deserving of this award. It's a privilege to accept it and I want to thank everybody involved and thanks very much. And of course the sponsors and the businesses that contribute to the Officer of the Month program, especially this month. Thanks very much. Mayor, back to you. On behalf of the City of Homestead Police Department, this plaque is presented to K-9 Officer Brian Kennedy for being selected Officer of the Month, September 2008. Along with the award, we want to thank the local businesses who donate every month to the Officer of the Month. This month we have Awards Incorporated donated the plaque. The City Attorney's Wife Sirota donated $100. First National Bank of South Florida, a $50 savings bond. Community Bank of Florida, a $50 savings bond. Ferguson's Jeweler, a $75 gift certificate. A new one to the list is Havana Joe Cigars, a $25 gift certificate. Logo's Store, a $50 gift certificate. Blake Chevrolet, $300 lube oil filter and car detailing. Captain Car Wash, a free car wash. Nita Jensen, two memberships to the City of Homestead Community Concerts. And dinner for two at Maya's. Thank you very much. Mr. Manager. I know Brian doesn't want me to speak, but Brian, congratulations. And just for the people who are watching at home, Major Kennedy is not his father, it's his younger brother. Thank you.
Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Manager. We have another Mr. presentation Nelson. tonight. Uh, Sergeant Trad. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, tonight, we have the uh, Dr. Green and Dr. Patterson from the Homestead Animal Hospital and his staff. Uh, last weekend, they had a fundraiser, a rummage sale. Uh, they uh, are donating some of the proceeds from that rummage sale to the City of Homestead Canine Unit, and we're very appreciative of that. And I'd like to have them come on up, including the staff and two dots, to accept a <laughs> presentation on behalf of <laughs> the police department, the city, <laughs> the Homestead Animal Hospital has been caring for our canines uh, apparently for a long time. I, I asked uh, our most senior canine handler, uh, Brian Kennedy, here earlier how long uh, the doc has been docs have been caring for the dogs and uh, he said it was before their time so perhaps Dr. Patterson can enlighten us but uh, it's been a long time they, they do a great job the staff um, is, almost spoils our dogs um, and they receive some great care and these folks do some great work on top of which uh, it's always gives a peace of mind to know that at any time of the night um, if we have an emergency, we can call, and the docs are going to be there, answer the phones, and we don't have to worry about uh, driving up to somewhere in Miami to an emergency uh, canine unit uh, somewhere up in Kendall or Miami. So that, that, that's a great asset that we have. And without further ado, I'd like to present you guys with a brand new plaque for your lobby as well as a uh, unit photo autographed by all the canine officers. <coughs> and here's our unit photo autographed and the plaque the plaque reads the Homestead Police Department recognizes and acknowledges Dr. Arthur Green, Dr. Walter Patterson and the staff at the Homestead Animal Hospital for their continued support to the, of the canine unit Last, uh, I guess it was about three weeks ago, October 13th, I believe it was, one of our uh, canines, Bart, Officer uh, Rodriguez's dog, they were responding to a, a burglary in progress and encountered armed subjects. Subjects shot at Officer Rodriguez and his canine partner, Bart. Bart was hitting a leg. Get back to talking, or my comment earlier about being able to call in the middle of the night and know that somebody's going to pick up the phone when you really need them. This was about a 3 a.m. call. I believe the doctor just about beat um, Yanko Rodriguez and Bart to the hospital and provided some emergency care in the middle of the night. I'd like to invite Yanko up for a special presentation. The canine unit wanted to, uh, and, and uh, Officer Rodriguez wanted to present uh, Officer uh, Green and the staff, and Officer Pat or Doc Patterson, with a special uh, presentation as well. On behalf of my partner and I, we'd like to present this in the lobby of the Hunter Animal Hospital. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the care that you guys give our dogs. Thank you. Thank and you. Have a good presentation for oh. you. Okay. Oh. 
Council <laughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, Officers, and your companions. It's, it's humbling to be here. We do what we do for love of animals, and uh, we're very grateful that we're able to take care of uh, the police dogs. I know Dr. Patterson has been doing it for a few more years than me, and uh, he's, he's known a lot of dogs over the years. I've, I hope I fill his, his, uh, his practice that he gave to me in a positive, as positive way as possible. Um, we had planned the, uh, the art so well before the incident with Yanko, and I'm glad it went over well. And we have a little gift to give towards the dogs for you, for you folks, and uh, hopefully we can do this again, and hopefully we don't uh, see you at 3 a.m. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor, while they're clearing out, I was given a note by a resident by the name of Bonnie King Moran, who would like to come forward at this time, and I believe she has something to uh, talk to you about um, that you'll be pleased with. So if I could take a couple of minutes and call uh, Miss Bonnie King Moran up to the microphone, I certainly would appreciate it. Oh, did you guys have another one to go? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought yeah, everybody was looking at sorry. To give to. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice Mayor. If, I'm sorry. if, if I may, I'm just a few more of the yeah. council's minutes. I, I apologize. Um, one of our uh, sergeants also gave a donation uh, last week, uh, a very generous donation. Um, Sergeant Crumpler and his wife, Ladonna, if I can have you guys come up. We just wanted to show our appreciation as well. They were all done. I apologize. We also would like to present you with an autographed picture of the 2008 Homestead Canine, and we really appreciate the generosity and support of the unit. And along those lines, also for their continued support, I know the Chief couldn't be here this evening, but on his behalf I'd like to have uh, Major Kennedy accept also, an autographed photo of the 2008 K-9 unit, and I also we also would like to present you with your own picture as well, and also to Captain Chong for their continued support of the unit. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I just, sorry to the police department, I thought they were done there with the veterinarians, but um, Bonnie King Moran wanted to come forward tonight and uh, give you a, a little bit of appreciation I, uh, from the neighborhoods and the uh, citizens of, uh, I guess, kind of a one-year celebration for what you've done. So oh. I was asked to introduce her, and, and here she is. Yes, the mayor, vice mayor, and staff, I thank you for having me here tonight. Linda, this is for you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> to commemorate your one year anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. You'll have to open it. <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Look at this. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's beautiful. It's a, a little precious moment with a ballot box, by the way, if you can't see it from there. I'll have it up there afterwards so everybody can come and take a peek. Thank you, Bonnie. That is so kind. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Bonnie.
I will now entertain a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. I'll move, move it. I'll second it. Spoon poppy moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor say aye. Aye. The aye. ayes carry. Thank you. Public hearings. Please be advised that the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you, wish, if you wish to comment on any of these items, please indicate the item number you'd like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. All testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish either to be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the counsel to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda package on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Section 2591, any lobbyist must register before addressing the Council on any of the following items. At this time, Council members must disclose any ex parte communications concerning any items on the agenda. At this time, the Clerk will swear on any persons to wish to testify on any quasi-judicial item. Would you please stand and raise your right hand? I state your name. Hereby swear or affirm that the information that I provide shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. You may be seated. Uh, Mayor, Council Members, we need to take tab four out of order before tab three yes. and hear that first. So moving on to tab four, a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting a request by Homestead Main Street Cafe Entertainment, Inc. for a special exception to allow nightclub use within the restricted retail commercial zoning district B1, located at 134 North Chrome Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. I'll entertain a motion for this item. I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any staff report on this item, Ms. Kamali? Sure. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, I'm member of the Council. Uh, this is a special exception permit for, for a nightclub within the B1 and, um, the zoning. It's located on 134th Chrome Avenue. It's the capacity of restaurant is 120, and the definition of nightclub is a uh, public dining establishment where alcohol beverages are sold for consumption on the premises where singing, dancing, and other form of paid entertainment is provided. Thank you. Sure. Any questions from, from council for the applicant or for staff? I'll reserve them for the next, the next one. This is a public hearing. Any comments or questions um, in, in support of um, this or against this item? I know I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see something happening over there, so <laughs> it might not miss those. Mayor, I can't say I did attend a function at the night these people. I know the... Uh, inside the structure wasn't finished but it's very very nice what they've done down there and i think we're going to have a good product thank you good evening mayor and council uh, this, my name is yvonne knowles i'm the lobbyist for the main street cafe entertainment uh, my address is 1697 north golden Eye lane in homestead may I introduce sandra hernandez who is the owner of the main street cafe entertainment good evening good evening the address is 13102 Northwest 7th Street, Miami. Thank you. We're looking forward to having a vital and exciting environment down at the Main Street Cafe. It has been successfully a restaurant in Homestead and sadly closed for about two years now. Has had a terrible effect on our downtown district. And so the fact that Ms. Hernandez, her husband, Luis Maria, and her other partner who is here, Mr. William Laura, who's in the audience, are willing to put their cash together and make this a vital and exciting new cafe, restaurant, and we call it a supper club as opposed to a nightclub. And the definition we call a supper club is that food will be served there throughout the evening. The kitchen will have a limited menu after 11 o'clock until 3 o'clock, but there will be tables set up with tablecloths and food available until closing time. So we would like to refer to it as a supper club as opposed to a nightclub. 
Thank you, Ms. Stoltz, and I agree with that because I thought about that because it's a restaurant as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, and this is an arts and entertainment district, so this is very applicable and appropriate for this particular area. Any other co any comments or questions from Council? Mayor Bell, I have a comment. Certainly, Ms. Lobos. Yes, I, uh, for the purpose of comparison, I did ask um, Ms. Sheree Kamali to give me the application, to provide with me the application for Coco's nightclub. I wanted to see, I know there was a lot of discussion as to this not being a nightclub, and so what I did is, and by the way, just for reference, this ordinance was passed in 1990, so it was well before our time here. Um, but I do see the difference, and I want a clarification. I know what we see in the application nightclub, and my concern was for the Seminole Theater. The Seminole Theater will be right in between Main Street and Coco's nightclub. Club. And I know that um, there has been some discussion about the noise. So now that I've compared Coco's nightclub application to this, I do see that there is a difference. It is um, more entertainment oriented as far as sitting down, eating, and enjoying a band rather than the other atmosphere. So I'm happy to support this application. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's what we're really fighting for that definition because it's a nightclub with music, live music, and a dance floor, but it basically were a restaurant. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? We'll now close the public hearing. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Tab 3 is a final order of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting a certificate of use to allow the operation of a restaurant nightclub with, with on-premise sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages located at 134 North Chrome Avenue within the Pioneer Quarter in the Arts and Entertainment District as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. This is Tab 3. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll second. The item has been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council for sa same issue, basically? Any I, I just questions? had one, if I may, Mayor. Vice Mayor. I think when, when um, Stick and Steins came, we, uh, this was prior to me sitting up here, but I remember attending the meetings, and I think if Captain Chong could help me, he may not even be familiar with it, but I think we asked them when they first opened to have an off-duty officer there, just to let the presence be known and as a safety feature. And I see that, that they're offering up a, a private security is going to be working. But I was just wondering with a new facility and, and that if and, and the extended hours to 3 a.m., if this is something that we might want to look at just for a short time, to, just to let the presence be known to the patrons. And one, that there is a homestead police officer there for their safety. And two, just to deter any problems that might arise if it's not, I don't know how the private um, security is being paid or, or whatever, but if it's not too much of a burden upon them, I'd like to see if we could maybe get them to, to offer up where they would allow a, a homestead police officer to come for a little while, just for, for the, so that the people know they're safe coming there until late at night and also for... Getting to their cars. Um, and also to let you know, people know that there is a police presence down that way. Um, and if I remember right, I thought we had asked when Stick and Steins come to do the same thing, just as kind of a grace period to work in to make sure everything is working smoothly. I didn't know if that was something the other council members thought would be a good idea, or, and if the applicant could do it, uh, feasibly do it uh, economically or, or not. Yes, we had offered a private security service, but we're so more than happy to uh, have a homestead police officer there during a trial, perhaps let's see the first six months of operation, see how it's going, and then revisit the discussion of having security, armed security after that to see whether we have any incidents or any problems. But we certainly would agree to having armed security for the first six months. Thank you. Thank you. Satisfied? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just think if we, can, if we can do that, I think it makes everybody feel safer. It would make me feel safer as a patron both ways as, as being downtown and, and staying there that there's not any trouble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yep. Any comments from the public? This is a public hearing. We'll now close the public hearing. Any further comments or questions from, from Council? Do we, do, we need to, do we need to add that in somehow, James? Excuse me, Mayor. That, that, that I asked for that and that they agreed to that? Well, if you all want this condition, then it, you, you will need to, we'll need to memorialize it in the final order as a condition to the final order. Which isn't, we can just add it as a condition. I'll just modify the final order to add it as a condition. I guess we need to make sure everybody else is in agreement with it, though, too, right? 
the way you should do it is if you'd like it to be approved as a condition, you'd need to move as amendment to the final order stating exactly what you want. See if you get a second vote on it as an amendment. If it passes, then it becomes part of the final approval. If not, then it just, the final order stays the way it's in the agenda. I have a comment. I'm not opposed to either them having their own private security or homestead police. I'm not opposed to either one. I'm cautious about memorializing this because I hate to start dictating, especially without any record. This is brand new. You know, this is brand new. It's actually right down the street from the police station. Right. So I'm kind of leery about it. I'm okay with it if that's what we do. If that's, you know, whatever is your pleasure. Well, they went above and beyond. I was only looking for maybe three months just to to give it a trial and make sure everything was working smoothly. If they wanted to go six, I mean, I'm happy with three months or, or, or whatever the, whatever you think. I just thought it was would be a good idea as we're trying to make Chrome Avenue and, and that venue down there seem safe to the people. And I think that uh, 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 a uh, uniformed officer, if they had one there, would help would help their cause in the long run also. Um, Mayor Bell. Any other comments? Yes, Mayor Bell. I think an important point that the Vice Mayor brought up was that when Stickenstein came before the Council, that they were um, asked or requested to have the same. So, Vice Mayor, if you could, um, I don't recall the meeting, so if you can just share with us how did, why well, did they request Mayor Stickenstein? Mayor Bell was sitting, sitting up here in one of the seats, but I remember sitting back there, and I could, I, 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 that's where the idea came to me, was that we had asked this other fellow to do it, so I thought, without having the papers in front of me tonight and, and have, and have well, I know stick, stick and Stein is a bar. Right. And so it's, it's a bar with pool tables. It's, it's you know. At 3 a.m., most things are happening. I mean, I, I'm okay either way. I just, I hate to memorialize something and to dictate to them, because they, right. they, they know they have to have some type of security. I don't like dictating to them whether it has to be a homestead police officer or security. That's my only cautious. We, def, we definitely want to have security, absolutely, but they proffer security. Right. So... I don't know that I want to memorialize it in, in, an, in the ordinance. I'd like to leave the ordinance as is, knowing that they are going to go ahead and take care of it. So, so wherever the will of, of this council is. Mayor Bell, yes. was it memorialized for Sickenstein? I don't, I'd have to go back I don't and remember. Look. It's a long time ago. Six years ago. Man, <laughs> but that's a bar. I mean, it is a little bit different. But I mean, I understand. I, and I'm okay either way. I just, I trust that they're going to have security. Do we know? Uh, Mayor, Council Members, I, I, I won't say something, but I'm not really sure exactly of the facts, Either. but I'm just right there for discussion. I think in, when Stinkstein came for this, for in front of Council then, I don't know if that area was already an arts and entertainment district. I think they came before arts and entertainment. Right. And we created it right afterwards. We extended hours. So the three hours, three, up to 3 a.m. with an arts and entertainment is now practically, it's given. Uh, but uh, I would say since they volunteered to say, okay, we try the first six months, they said, and Vice Mayor says three months, <coughs> since it's something they volunteered, uh, you know, I think this is a good compromise for everybody to just... Uh, I don't think there's an issue, actually, there was a Fair. dispute, but this is something they uh, offer also on the table, so... Make the motion. Yeah. Vice Mayor, do you want it as a motion? I have a, I have a question for the applicant. Uh, and it will be off duty, by the way, just for clarification. Yeah. Right, of course. Is this going to be the, the same type of entertainment uh, weekly, or is it going to change daily from... I can remember another bar over in... Uh, by the bowling alley that had a theme night. Is this bar going to have a theme night, or is it going to be the same? No, it's actually going to have different types of music and different nights. So be, uh, you're going to have jazz. You're going to, we're going to reinstitute the folk music that used to be there at the Main Street Cafe. So you'll have, uh, we're not setting up a specific schedule like Thursday is going to be always folk music, but we're going to try to do a mixed uh, a, a set of entertainment so everybody in the community will have a night where they can come and enjoy the music. But there'll be folk music, there'll be jazz, there'll be comedy night, and there'll be Latin nights. So is going to try to create something for everybody. But it's not set like, at this point we don't have a set schedule. But it'll be live music each night. Thank you. Vice Mayor, did you want to make it a motion? Or you? Whatever, whatever, if you guys are in favor of it, I was just had an eye, um, you know, a thought and thinking out loud about what I would like to see done downtown. That's a good thought. But if it's not the wish of the other council members, then we don't need to. I mean, I don't want to put a burden on them either. 
So if they offer to do it up front and we can trust them, which I'm sure we can, to stick to the word, then we can just go ahead. We have made a commitment to you that we will have security and we'll definitely have it there for the first six months to make sure that we know what the issues might be. That's all I'm just asking for. Thank you. So that's fine. We'll think about it. I just wanted to mention that I feel very comfortable and confident in leaving it as is. I agree with you, Mayor. We don't want to put more restrictions than what we have to, and they've already agreed to go ahead and do the security. In fact, we can do private security. You can use the Homestead Police. It would be up to you. And I know that it not only benefits the patrons, but it benefits you, too. Absolutely. Because the customers feel comfortable coming out there and safe coming out there, more customers will be coming out there. And I really appreciate Vice Mayor Burgess's concern about 3 o'clock in the morning and people being unsafe on Chrome, so I think it's a really important consideration. Thank you. Thank you. All hearts are clear on this item? Yeah. Okay. Never clouded anyway. Good. Good. Thank you very much. Roll call. Councilwoman Lovells? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. Moving on to tab five. Tab five is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting preliminary plat approval for the Village of Portofino East commercial on approximately 10.1 acre of land located southeast of the Homestead extension of the Florida Turnpike, east of Southwest 152nd Avenue, Kingman Road, and north of South, Southwest 312th Street, Campbell Drive, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Hi. The item's been properly moved. I'll second. And the item's been seconded. Um, staff report on this item, please. Sure. Uh, this is a tentative plat for two approved already the tentative plat uh, resolution number 2007-12159 and 2008-0558. This is in light commercial is under construction at this time. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions from council members for, uh, for the applicant? Mr. Coker, do you want to say anything? Uh, Mr. Coker, representing the applicant, 1404 South Andrews Avenue. His mic's going on. 1404 South Andrews Avenue, and I'll uh, be glad to answer any questions. As Ms. Kamali uh, said, this is merely a consolidation of two previously approved commercial plats. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from council? Any questions from the public? This is a public hearing. We'll now close the public hearing. Roll call. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Council Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank Next you. item. Yes, moving on to tab six, resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting preliminary plat approval for Park South at Homestead Park of Commerce on approximately 39.57 acres of land located on the northeast corner of Park of Commerce Boulevard, southwest 336th Street and southwest 147th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. This is tab six. I entertain a motion for approval. I'm moving. Oh, no second. It's been properly moved and seconded. This is a public hearing. Any staff report on the item? Uh, this is a T plot for a 550,000 square feet of uh, warehouse on a 40 acre, um, about 40 acre parcel in Park of Commerce. Uh, the, the future land use is uh, PRAC. The existing zoning is PUD, uh, and uh, the, the applicant has divided this parcel to 42 uh, between half an acre and 1.5 acre. This is a, a T plot application. Thank you. Any comments or questions from council? This is a public hearing. Yes, Colonel. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council. Um, we just wanted to come by and uh, thank the uh, Mayor and the City Council and also Park South uh, and Holland Knight working with the base and that partnership that we've developed with the uh, Park of Commerce to look at both uh, the use of the property in the sense of the site plan and ensure that we have the right capability between that area which is in the APZ number two and the base. So we're, we're looking forward to a light industrial, the things that we're looking forward to which is very compatible with the base and the future uh, of the area down there. And again, we have no objections to the T-plat as presented for the 40 acres. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from public? Comments or questions from Council? This also came with unanimous uh, 6-0 from Planning and Zoning as well. 
Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Robles? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Council <coughs> carries. Thank you so much. Moving on. Legislative. In ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending City Code Chapter 28 Utilities by amending Section 28251 Schedule Electric Rates, 28256 Street Lighting and rent, Rental Outdoor Lighting Rates to 28292 Application Fee, 28294 Fees for Processing the Application. Section 28320, Electric Line Extension Policy and Procedure Revised Rates and Charger, providing for confirmation or regulatory approval, providing for inclusion in the code, severability, savings, and an effective date. I'll move it. Second it. The items have been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council? <coughs> comments from the public? Thank you very much. So this is the second reading. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Mobles? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to tab A. Tab 8 is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan by amending the professional mixed use PMU land use classification to allow an increase in the maximum lot coverage pursuant to the provisions of the Local Government Comprehensive Planning and Land Development Regulation Act, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. This is second reading. I'll move it. The items been properly moved? Second. And it's items been seconded. Any comments or questions from Council? I do have a question, Mayor. Did Captain. we get any samples of the visuals that we were at requesting at the last meeting? Uh, yes. Um. Sherry, do you want to go over? <laughs> may, Mayor, Council, may I just say a few things? Certainly. Uh, just, just to refresh, refresh everybody's memory, this came in front of council a while back where we only has one trigger, 80% limitation on the lot. Uh, it went to DCA, DCA had some comments, send, they sent it back, so now we put it maximum uh, building coverage is 40%, but not to exceed 80 for in previous services. So sometimes, you know, you may, it depends on the parking lot requirements, you may have you may reach the 40% for, for a building, but you will not go over the maybe 60 or 75%. It depends on how much other the barking requirements are. The way it used to be when it was abroad, practically you could have a building coverage more than 40%, could have been 50% if they met the barking requirements and the previous services. So this is really, DCA wanted to have it more stringent than we, the way we approved it before due to traffic concurrency and issues like that. So we are, we are making it tighter, call it, uh, you know, to transmit it back to DC. Thank you. And, oh. Let me let council go first. Any comments or other comments or questions from council? Oh, yes, sorry. Vice Mayor. Uh, oh. Mayor. Councilman Lobos, Councilman Sierra. I agree with the city manager. After the last discussion that we uh, talked about this item, I did go back and realized that on uh, June 16 of 2008, we did approve this transmittal to DCA, and the application at that time was less restrictive. We actually had approved 80 percent, um, both building and parking lot lot coverage. And so when I look at this, I realized that DCA had sent back comments making it more restrictive. They wanted us to limit the building coverage to 40 percent uh, for the purposes of not adding intensity to the level of services. So I voted yes for it on June 16th, and I'll be voting for it again. I agree uh, with DCA that restricting the building lot coverage to 40 percent and then the rest to 80 percent is a good compromise in between what we had initially um, thought of doing. Thank you. Ms. Sierra? No, I also like the fact that we do have res very strict um, guidance as far as the landscaping is concerned as well and that, that makes a big difference because they can have the uh, 80 percent coverage and do nothing with the other 20 percent that's not covered but we do have restrictions on that as well and that's important to note. Thank you. Right. Plus, I think there was a little confusion last time. It, w it wasn't terribly clear, but the fact that the maximum lot coverage is 80 percent, but the maximum building coverage is 40 percent. Right. So, so it makes it a little bit more clear. And um, so, and this is typical of what you see in B1 and B1A as well. So, this is not anything that's not typical for professional mixed use. 
So, Al, any... I have a comment. Yes, Councilman. I disagree. I think it should go to 60 percent. This is the PMU. This is in the residential neighborhood in the northwest section, and I don't believe that 80 percent lot coverage is good in that area. It's, you know, a 40 percent house and a 20 percent lot I think would be good, or a parking area would be good in that PMU. Thank you, Councilman. Any further comments or questions from Council? This is a public hearing. Any comments or questions from the public? Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Burgess? No. Councilman Malobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? No. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Next item is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, considering the request of Roberta Burroughs and Donna Crouch for a small-scale amendment to the comprehensive plan by changing the land use designation of an approximately .33-acre site from medium-density residential use, MRU, to light commercial use, LCU, located at 25 Northeast 12th Street, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. Thank you. Move approval. Is there a motion? Move it. I'll second it. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council for staff? Ms. Springer? Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Gail Springer, GSD Group. I'm here on behalf of Roberto Burroughs and Donna Crouch. This application um, for a small-scale amendment to the Mass Land Use Plan to light commercial from residential medium density. Um, the staff has recommended approval. Um, I believe you have your staff report, and we would be pleased to answer any questions that you have. Did you just say that it's going from light commercial to medium density, or medium density to light commercial? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I did, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you said it backwards. Thank you. Yes, and this also came with unanimous, uh, unanimous recommendation from the Planning and Planning Board as well. Any comments or questions from Council for Ms. Springer? I have a comment. I drove by the other day, and it's a beautiful establishment. I wish you the, luck, the best of luck. Thank you. It is a beautiful Victorian, old Victorian house that is nationally, uh, on the National Register and also locally uh, designated as historic. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Lovins? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Moving on to tab 10. Tab 10 is the uh, first reading of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida to adopt amendments to the City of Homestead's comprehensive plan to strengthen coordination between water supply and local land use planning by amending the tax contained in the future land use, infrastructure, conservation, intergovernmental coordination, and capital improvements elements, providing for adoption pursuant to section 163.3184 Florida statutes, providing for inclusion in the City of Homestead's comprehensive plan, providing for repeal of conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Mm -hmm. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from council? Any questions for staff? Pretty much a no-brainer here, I think. Any, this is a public hearing. Any comments or questions from the public? Thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilman Lobos? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. It's first reading of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City's fiscal year budget beginning October 1, 2007, ending September 30, 2008, by increasing both revenue and expenditures by $507,761, providing for a repeal or severability and an effective date. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council? This yes, is a good thing. thing. Yes, Ms. Lobos. I Mr. Shahada, can you just refresh um, everybody's memory as to what you did make this presentation? I had forgotten uh, during the budget presentation you did mention that there was a possibility, so this is something that we were anticipating. 
Mayor Council Member, absolutely. This is something I went over that this is something hanging there. And this is going back really several years before the county started the busway project. And since we got the, uh, since the Happy Benny Sales Tax was approved, practically we have been uh, putting money, uh, the 20%, we committed the 20% uh, uh, transit related uh, restrictions to go towards the busway. The city entered into an agreement with the county to, to pay for the, the additional improvements, and that's the fencing, lighting, and also the, 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 the bus shelters and the bus benches. Uh, unfortunately, when, when, the, when the prior budget was done, there was no bill coming from the county because it's been like dormant for so many years. But we, this is something we anticipate, and if it ever came through, we were going to just amend the budget instead of just keep budgeting it and not happening. And uh, t during my presentation, I mentioned it, and uh, you know, luck, I don't know if they were listening to my presentation or what, but right after it was approved, they sent us the bill, and we. Uh, I'll be very frank with you, I wanted to pay it through the, the new fiscal year, but the bill was paid in the old fiscal year, so we have to do the proper accounting by just amending the, the prior budget to account for the deficit. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Comments or questions from Council? This is a public hearing. Any comments from the public? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilman Sierra? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We're now open the floor for public comments at this time. Anybody have a public comment? Please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Shocked. This is from the city manager. Mayor Councilwoman, just two quick things. Uh, in November 11th, uh, uh, to an observation of Veterans Day, with City Hall customer service will be closed. Uh, garbage and trash pickup will be as scheduled, so we continue doing business as far as garbage and trash is uh, concerned. And also I'd like to remind people who are uh, uh, going to be participating or coming to see us at the Lozner Bar that we are going to have a family fest. The second family fest uh, on November 15 between 6 and 10 p.m. and there will be a band called Echo Echo Dan Echo Echo and they are from New Orleans performing that evening. So please tell your neighbors, friends, family, and everybody to come over. It was uh, last month. It was a beautiful event, and uh, hopefully we get support from the community by just participating free so we can have successful events there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. <laughs> Vice Mayor Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. Um, let me just go over a couple of quick meetings that we'll be having. Uh, one is this Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. here uh, from 5 to 6 is the Mayor's Youth Council meeting. Um, Bob Jensen is going to be coming and we're going to be setting the groundwork for the Youth Council and their food drive to help out the uh, Homestead Soup Kitchen and uh, any other entities that might need it for the Christmas uh, holiday season. And then on November the 12th at 8.30 a.m. we have the Homestead Community Image Advisory Board meeting which will be meeting, um, that meeting, the general meeting will be uh, about the CRA and what um, the CRA and the, and the community can do to work together and, and share some ideas back and forth. So that will be the general idea of that meeting on that morning. Um, I attended the uh, groundbreaking for the William F. Dixon Senior Center the other day. Um, it looks like things are moving along very well over there. Um, and, and that should be a great facility when we get it all up and done, I believe, in two years, is it, Mike? Something like that. Hopefully, the end of uh, next uh, calendar year. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and just one last thing. There's a uh, private nonprofit organization here in town that uh, does a cooperative preschool for kids that's having a spaghetti dinner and a silent auction this Thursday night at the Villages Clubhouse at anybody that's interested from 5 to 8 p.m. Tickets are $6, and they've got a list of uh, great... Um, 
items that can be bid on. I, I mentioned the skydive last time. They've got a, a three-day golf outing down at Ocean Reef, a vacation in the, the, the middle part of the state up towards Orlando, Miami Sea Aquarium tickets, many restaurant certificates, zoo tickets. Um, Domino's is thrown in. I believe it's one pizza a month for a year or a week for a year. So they've got some great items, and anybody that wanted to come out and support that uh, uh, that preschool, which is where our kids learn. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Councilman Lobos. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this past week was definitely focused on Parks and Rec's department, and I just want to beat you, Councilman McCormick, to the line and just congratulate you guys, not only with the uh, Dickinson Center opening, encouraging and exciting to actually see something going on there, but the Trunk or Treat and the Boo Bash was just an absolutely phenomenal event. It was greatly attended. I mean, by the time we were, we were there about two hours and we had counted close to 3,000 people and everybody seemed to have a great time um, just quality events the magic show the music everything you guys put together so thank you I had a great time and so I just want to thank you for that sorry um, last uh, two weeks ago now I attended the uh, Institute for elected municipal officials elected officials and um, I have to say that, I mean, that was so well worth it. We have two that we attend. We have the intro and then we have the advance. Um, and just learn so much about growth, uh, controlling growth, smart growth, which I found out is just a trendy word because smart growth has been going on since the creation of our country. Um, but I'm looking forward to some more um, learning about the uh, comprehensive plan and so that was really the focus to understand that to know the amendments that come before us and so I know Mayor you had said that um, you wanted to invite that professor that had taught us um, the items that they did about the small scale amendments and the comprehensive plan so I just wanted to remind you publicly that um, I need to get that guy down here to continue the training. Thank you, and that's a great segue, I, and that's not in my business, but I, I've already mentioned it to the manager, and I thought it would be good for council as well as planning and zoning board. That would be good for all of us. And on the eve of what is turning out to be one of the biggest events I know of my generation with the presidential election tomorrow, and um, just two reminders, one obviously to vote, the other is to get through the entire ballot. I know it's lengthy, uh, but it's very important. The city uh, charter amendments are on there as well, as well as county, uh, state, and I know I've gotten a lot of phone calls, emails, people wanting to talk to me to maybe uh, help them better understand the amendment. So I encourage you that if you still um, are not clear on what the amendments say, that you call someone um, that can maybe explain that to you and enter the ballot fully informed. Thank you so much. Vote. Thank you. Councilman McCormick. Thank you, Mayor Bell. I'd like to say thank you and uh, congratulations to Robert Landon and his staff for an event that was well put together, even though the uh, mayor and Councilman Lowe was kind of mad at the, at the our, our thing we had put together, but that's between <laughs> me and Robert, so thank you again. Yeah, we, we, so they, they were a little upset, but we, we came through, we had a good job, you know, we had a good time out there, so once again, job well done. Um, By the way, Parks and Recreation made <laughs> Java look really good. They did. <laughs> Um, Thursday at my town hall meeting in, uh, in the Southwest District at the Piper Williams Center. It will be starting at 6 p.m. So I encourage the whole community to come out and see what we have going over in the Southwest area. It will be very informative of long-term, short-term goals and also the accomplishments so far of me being um, elected in the Southwest District. And I have to say congratulations to Patricia F uh, Fairclough. She's in the Air Base Elementary Teacher of the Year. So uh -huh. congratulations to her. Those are my announcements for this evening, Mayor Bill. Now that I am not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Nelson. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Miss Annie Diaz uh, at uh, Campbell Drive Elementary School, who I was principal for a day. Um, she showed me every class, and I got to interject with the students. And, and uh, they, they have... Uh, a good school over there. I, we, we talked a little bit about initiatives and things that might help her. Um, and she was very open to, to having meetings with me to see what we can do. Um, I also attended the Advanced Institute for Elected Municipal Officials. That was a very good course. And yes, I agree, we need to have that gentleman down here. That was some more questions we have to ask. Um, 
I'd like to thank Community Bank for the champagne and okra that night we went up there. It was uh, a lot of people, it went very nice. Um, let's see, the, um, attended the uh, Family Fall Fest at uh, Lausner Park. I'd like to thank Parks and Rec, they did a great job. They had someone there, uh, and, and Dan was there, and uh, Mike was there most of the evening too, I believe. Had uh, a lot of great young bands. Uh, from elementary school and into middle school, and uh, they were really good. Um, this uh, past week I met with uh, Metro Dade County School Police, Homestead PD, and the Florida City Police, with Dr. Larry Feldman and uh, other school board employees. We've got a, a growing problem of gangs down in Homestead High School, and together, working as a team, we are going to help that school, and they're already in there making a difference. And I would just like to say thank you to Dr. Feldman for for coming down. He's not even on the board yet, and he's down here. We were down here three days uh, for, let's see, the first day. I think the meeting lasted three hours, and then we went to the high school and met all the teachers and talked with the teachers, and then we had the education committee meeting the next night. So it was a lot of people putting forth a lot of effort to, to help our community and I want to I say thank you to everybody uh, out there. Um, my wife and children and I attended the, uh, the Boo Bash and Trunk or Treat. It was very great and just like to go off what everybody says, hats off to you guys, man. That was a great event. Um, can't wait till next year. I'd like to get the police department involved. I think we ought to get every department involved. and. Uh, it was inside the gated area, very safe, no cars moving around. Um, thank you. That was, that was excellent. There was a lot of kids happy that they got so much candy in such little space. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank Captain Randy Chong and Team Metro for handling the mini flea market on Redland Road uh, for two weeks straight on Saturdays. You all have been coming out. And the residents are calling me and saying thank you. We, we've needed that. It's been going on and on. And uh, thank you for, for going out there two weeks in a row. And from what you told me, we're going to be doing it a couple more weeks just to get them done and, and out of there so they don't leave the, the trash and everything that they've been doing there. And uh, go vote tomorrow, please, everybody. Thank you. Councilwoman Sierra? Thank you for starting what I was going to say. I was actually going to thank Dr. Larry Feldman, uh, Ms. Janet Hupp, which is our regional superintendent, Ms. Wise, which is our assistant superintendent, Interim Chief Hurley for Miami-Dade County Public School Police Department, Chief Roll, um, Major Kennedy, Captain Chong, Chief Taylor and his crew that came out. We met basically three days in a row, but there's also other residents here in our uh, house tonight. Um, Mr. Brian Judge, who was at uh, two of the three meetings. Miss uh, Monica Whitaker, who is always there for the Education Committee. We had uh, Dr. Jim Trantham, who was here earlier, and Mr. Kevin Sullivan, and I appreciate all of you coming out. We had, Mayor, if you would have seen our Education Committee on Thursday, it was a packed house. When I ended up counting how many people had been here, it was 115 people that showed up. 80% of our schools were represented by principals. Our region was here represented. Our, our school police, our residents. It was a packed house, and these people are here to make a difference, make a difference in our schools, and make a difference for education. Um, and I appreciate um, Mr. Judge, Mr. Sullivan, Monica. You know, it's just, it's what we need to do. We need to get together to make that difference, and I thank you guys very much. For doing that. I was actually a principal of the day Homestead Senior uh, with Miss Carrie Masonette. She has made some great strides and we do need to make some more, but uh, we are working very hard along her side and making sure that, that this school year will be unforgettable and we do what we have to do. One last thing I would like to just say is uh, please get out and vote tomorrow. It is important for the city of Homestead to really represent the number of voters that we can get out there. You guys have absolutely no idea how important it is to have that representation. When your elected officials go to the state or go outside of the state to our representatives, it does make a difference when we have a low voter turnout or if we have a high voter turnout. 
they're going to help those cities that have the high voter turnout more. And if you think about it, it makes logical sense. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilwoman Sierra. I have two appointments to the Tourism Committee, Susan Gonshaw and Stacy Palmer. I'd like to entertain a motion for approval on these two appointments. I move. A second. They've been properly moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes carry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, um, a, lot, a lot has been said, um, but that the family fest that we had that was in the park just a, a week ago Saturday was so good. And I counted, I mean, there would, as the kids would go on, all the parents would climb in, you know, pour in and their friends. But at any one time in the park, there was at least 300 or so people. And it was the most I have seen in that park in a very, very, very long time. And it was fun. I mean, I have to confess that the style of music wasn't exactly my style of music, but it was great going out there and seeing the kids sing and, and um, play their guitars and, and, you know, play their music. It was just really great. And you are going to see more and more of that in the city of Homestead. We're going to go back to that monthly style of, a, of a, some type of a Friday fest, so something that's going to go on in there. Um, the, the Advanced Institute was talked about. Absolutely fabulous. Excellent. And also, be, besides planning, we also learned a little bit about the budget process as well. So it was v very, very well-rounded, very, very good. Um, last Tuesday was my first State of the City address, the city's sixth and my first. And I want to thank everybody, the staff, and everybody for making it such a success. I have gotten such positive feedback that, that I it's just been wonderful. Uh, voicemails left on my machine as well as emails and um, text messages and so I just want to thank everybody and it was packed and um, Jimmy from Jimmy from the Capri said that we fed about 300 people so it was pretty packed in there so I, I want to thank everybody it was it was very exciting by the way I really enjoyed it Congressman Marius Blood introduced me. Uh, David Payton was ill, so I had a stand-in who was a pretty amazing stand-in, I have to admit. So I want to thank, thank him for that as well. We talked about the Senior Citizen Center groundbreaking. We also had the Park of Commerce, the 40-acre the parcel that's going to be start being built on. We also had that groundbreaking ceremony last Thursday. It was more like a rock-breaking ceremony. But it's great to see progress going on in the, in the Park of Commerce in that. Also, I judged a Halloween contest last Friday at the Baptist, at Baptist Hospital, and they put on plays and skits, and so I was one of the, one of the panel of judges, and it was it was hysterical. And then the, the costume. So it, it was it was fun. It was pretty good. And I think um, we've pretty much talked about the boobash. But I, I don't ever remember seeing this many people there. I don't I don't know why, but you, there was as many people on the in on, under the pavilion as there were on this side gathering, you know, getting candy. And we were afraid any moment the candy was going to be gone because there was just droves and droves of kids. But they had such a wonderful time, and it was just it's worth it to see them. And um, I was principal at MacArthur South, and it was great. It was really really great, and it's just wonderful to see how sometimes these young men do very, very well in a very controlled setting. And sometimes that's just what they need. And the principal over there is just, it's really phenomenal. And I've heard really, really wonderful things about him. So we have had a very, very busy, busy couple of weeks. I want to thank everybody for attending. And Bonnie, thank you so much for that. That is just really, really special. So thank you very much for that and remembering that. Oh, and I want to congratulate this council. This is one year for everybody Actually, everybody on this council, it's their first year, and it's their first anniversary, and it's my sixth anniversary, but my first as mayor. So I am very proud of this group of people. You have no idea. This is a hard-working group of people. I have seen more progress in this city in the last one year than I can't tell you how long, maybe the past five or six years. So I'm very proud, maybe ten. So I'm proud of this group of, of council members. You guys keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And with no further business to attend to, thank you. One more. Um, by the way, Mr. Burgess was also principal for a day. We don't want to let him forget that. <laughs> Mayor, council members, normally I go before you, so I'm afraid to say things that you are going to cover and uh, be accused of taking the... Uh, <laughs> so I, I stay quiet to say you cover, but you cover everything I really want to talk about. But I just really want to emphasize, I know you all thank the Parks and Recreation Department for a great job at the Blue Bash. I can't tell you... Uh, all what I tell Robert and Joanna just we just make us proud and they don't spare anything to do what they need to do. You know, we anticipated 
A thousand kids come there. It was two thousand kids. When you count the adults, it was in excess of three thousand people. Uh, it was so well attended. Lots of people came and thank us there, and I know they came and thank the mayor, and council members, uh, and there was so much chocolate given there. Actually, Robert wants to name that area Hershey's South. <laughs> Uh, again, you know, they said we didn't have a council meeting since we had the October 25th Family Fest. Also, my hat off to Dan Wick yes. and his staff. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, Mayor, yeah, you know, I was going to also say uh, congratulations to all of you for your accomplishments in one year. I've been working for the city of Homestead for 14 years, and I can tell you I am a witness to lots of things happening and I know we try to do things and I'm, we're not moving at you the speed you like us to move at unfortunately we have to go certain processes but I promise you we'll just keep up the your expectations and citizens expectations and doing what's best for the community and thank you thank you and thank you mr. manager thank you for stepping it up for us let me tell you you work very hard and we really appreciate it and there's a lot happening in the city of Homestead there's a lot getting done and people are noticing that so I want to thank you for that as well and Joanna thank you so much both of you well with no further business to attend to this meeting is adjourned thank you go vote